<laughs> so yeah, have you heard? I decided where I'm going to move in Illinois. I'm moving to Shermer. Shermer. I'm moving to Shermer, Illinois. Shermer. It's been my dream. I it, it has been my lifelong dream to move to Shermer, Illinois, because you know all those movies. It makes it look great. I think I'm going to be very happy there. Shermer, Illinois. It's my dream. I'm going to move there, and it's going to be great. And you know. Yep. <laughs> if this is a reference to something, it's not what I get. <laughs> the Breakfast Club, Pretty in Pink, 16 Candles. Is that where, where it takes place? Yes. Oh. It just. It... I've seen The Breakfast Club. <laughs> I'm saddened. I'm I'm just I'm I'm saddened in so many ways. So many, many ways. Hey, which which one would you be in Breakfast Club? You know, I want to say I would be Judd Nelson, but I know full well I would be Anthony Michael. <laughs> you know, I I would want to oh I'd fucking totally be Judd Nelson. It was a better year. To... No, no, I would be I would be flare gun in the fucking locker. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so, are we ready for the nonsense tonight? All right. It's it's um well, it's it's a special blend as always, you know, proprietary special blend that we we put together. I I've, I've got some interesting things. In probably the Chinese sense of the word, so. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And I have the camera again because it's being stupid, but. You know. And, um. Ah, 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 everything's all weird. The first one this week, um. Have you ever been in class and secretly suspected that your your teacher was doing something else while you were all working? You know, he looks like he's working at his computer, he's reading something, but he, you know he's doing some other shit. Yeah. Because, well, th there were some students uh, this week in um, in uh, in Sw in Switzerland who who, who uh, found out that was indeed, in fact, the case and probably the um absolute worst way ever also maze people still use overhead projectors this is this is gonna involve uh body parts i know kind of <laughs> actually a lack thereof swiss uh. teacher accidentally shows x-rated amputee porn on overhead projector a Swiss teacher was busted looking at X-rated amputee porn during class after accidentally beamed the images onto a blackboard. The bungling KB Zurich Business School educator reportedly forgot to turn off the overhead projector to surf the adult material online. As the student sat peacefully with their heads buried inside their books, he decided to take a sneak peek at several hardcore movies and pics of naked women with amputated limbs. Unfortunately for him, was also projected onto the wall for all his pupils to see. The kid took a picture of the incident and uploaded it online, and unsurprisingly, it soon went viral. Really? All right, I don't know where quite to start on this one. Um, very specific fetish to start with. Surprisingly specific fetish. For this gentleman. And. Just. That's not one you want to know someone has. You know. It, 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 yeah you know everybody's got their, their particular strange little turn on and whatnot, But. You don't really want to know what it is. Because once you know. Things change. 
this is not what you this is not one you want to look at your teacher and you, you don't want to think amputee porn that's well, i think like any anything like that you don't want to know about your teacher like i mean it's not like you can assume that they don't ever do anything like that but it's just one of those things you just don't want to associate in your mind like uh I came across one of my teachers in a Victoria's Secret once, and I know that that she wears underwear, but I don't need to associate <laughs> with that. Is the thing? Yeah. Well, this is. It's not that it's wrong to ha have underwear. It's just one of those things you don't want to awkwardly find your teacher there. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's it's. I, I, I want to quote that. It's not wrong to have underwear. That, that's something everyone should remember, actually. It's wrong to have underwear, and then, you know, people have fetishes that, you know, in their own home, if it's legal, it's fine. But you don't want to know if it's your teacher. <laughs> and it's not one you want to share with everybody. I mean... No. That's, I, I think, like, there's one thing you need to remember if you're going to be surfing your amputee porn <laughs> in class check that the projector's off like if you don't remember anything else check the projector's off <laughs> how long do you think it was before he he noticed you know, five like, ten minutes i'd give it because it'd be like uh, is this, uh I, I bet you he heard the kids laughing about it i bet that's what it was yeah that well i don't know if laughing is the right i would not be laughing i would be like People would be laughing. Like, how long? Yeah. You've been to high school. People yeah. would be laughing. <laughs> I bet you the kids, like, at least it was not elementary school. At least it was within an age that, like, you know, it's not going to traumatize them. <laughs> Just, it, of all the things to be doing in the middle of class. Yeah. You know, I, I can understand texting. I can understand, you know, you know, sneaking, you know, like, watching a fucking archer or something but porn that that's normally kind of a private time sort of thing not a everybody's busy guess i'll watch some porn okay uh, oh okay uh uh gold experience says i bet he came without noticing mm hmm hmm <sighs> All right, well, um, here's a little bit of uh, history trivia. Did you know back in the, uh, I think, 1700s, 1800s, when they buried somebody, they would put this bell mounted to the, the grave with, a, with a, a, a wire that went down into the coffin, so in case they buried you alive... You could start ringing the fucking bell and be like, hey, come dig my ass up. Oddly enough, it might be something we want to reinstate because uh, this guy kind of had um, use for it. Dead man kicks his way out of body bag at funeral home. Uh, even the Bible Belt corners don't use the word miracle lightly. But Holmes County, Mississippi coroner Dexter Howard has no qualms using the word for the resurrection, as it were, of Walter Williams, who was declared dead Wednesday night. Howard received the call from Williams' hospice nurse, who told Howard the 87-year-old had passed away. Um, Howard checked Williams' pulse about 9 p.m., pronounced him dead. Coroner completed his paperwork, placed Williams in a body bag, and transported to the funeral home, he said. There's something strange happened. The body bag moved. Got him into the embalming room. He noticed his legs beginning to move like kicking. He also began to do a little breathing. All right, and, and I love how, how they classify this as, as a miracle. That's not a miracle. That's someone doing their job badly. Because, you know, he, he, it's not like he came back from the dead. It's somebody fucked up. You know, oh, I checked his pulse. Did you have a little EKG thing on? Did you, did you check the beep? 
Beep, beep. No, I just put my fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, In the article, it says that his defibrillator uh, possibly jump started his heart. So. That sounds so much like reaching for me to me. That's like, well, yeah. uh, uh, it's defibrillator restarted. That's it. I didn't screw up. It's a miracle. It's Jesus. He no, no, no. It's you're bad at your job. Yeah, <laughs> Mayor's best episode of House ever. <laughs> but it's not lupus. No. It's still not lupus. Yeah, people are going, that's not a miracle. That's terrifying. Because that's not the first thing I would be thinking. If a dead body started moving around in the bag, I wouldn't be going, it's a miracle. I'd be going, get a shotgun. <laughs> Double tap in the head. Always be sure. That's, that's, that'd be, that'd be the worst thing. You like, you wake up and then you're in a body bag. Cause the last thing you know, you were in the nursing home, you were in bed, you were to sleep, then you wake up and it's like, oh shit. Well, this is happening. I don't exactly know how, how I would, I would, uh, yeah, what about being in the bag? Exactly. People are going, oh God. Well, I mean, and like on the way to the embalming room too. I mean, oh, that's, that's pretty close. Oh God, they they were about to hook him up to the machine. Oh, I feel happy. I yeah, no, not for long. Uh, Bring out your dead. I'm not dead. You're not fooling anyone. <laughs> This guy, you know, everyone's so happy, they're not realizing this guy is uh, going to be suing the fuck out of everyone. Everyone is getting sued. Everyone. The coroner's getting sued, the nursing home's getting sued, the doctor's getting... Everyone is getting their own personal lawsuit out of this. And I... I think he pretty much has grounds for it. I, does this qualify as attempted murder? I, I think if there's that many people, though, that, that thought he was dead, it's not just one person screwing up, though. So either it was a, a massive fuck-up or, you know... I tend, sometimes it really is hard to tell. <laughs> I tend to err on the side of massive fuck-up because I have personally witnessed many massive fuck-ups in my lifetime. <sighs> God damn. How's he feeling now? I, I don't... I don't know. Probably... I would be pissed off. Well, he's not dead. No. Which is the good thing. Be like, which one of you sons of bitches wanted the will early? Alright, so... I'm gonna be traveling tomorrow. And uh, that means I have to deal with the TSA. Who, no one has a good no one has a good estimation of the TSA anywhere I've come to find. Nobody goes, oh yay, the travel safe, the travel security administration. I love them. No one says that. No one anywhere ever has ever said that. So I I know I'm I always brace myself for trouble, but this is a whole new kind of dumb. Uh, you you know what bitcoins are, right? Yeah, right, vaguely. So. I mean, it's, it's online currency, basically. Right, online currency. The, the, the stress point there being online currency. Well, TSA harasses Traveler after seeing Bitcoin in his bag. The TSA attempted to screen... <laughs> Airline passenger Davey Barker for the virtual currency Bitcoin. Barker is co-founder of Bitcoins Not Bombs, a Bitcoin advocacy group that gets donation-based organizations and social entrepreneurs set up to handle the currency. After going through security, he opted out of the body scanner but was successfully cleared through the checkpoint. Two people stopped him and it got uncomfortable quickly. Quote, I was about to ask for my attorney, who happens to be my wife, when the person wearing the orange shirt said, what about Bitcoin? flabbergasted. 
It's above and beyond any scrutiny I'd ever received from the TSA and a little bit frightening when they were looking for Bitcoin. I said I didn't understand the question. He continued, we saw Bitcoin in your bag and need to check. If there was ever a time to call bullshit, and yeah, he said, "Do you have superior officers? Because I don't think you know what you're talking about." So you never want to hear when you're when you're talking to someone that where it doesn't make any sense that they are the managers. Yeah, the, the guy responded, repeating. Can I talk to your manager? I am the manager. Well, we're all fucked then, aren't we? I I love knowing that the people responsible for keeping death off of our planes honestly tried to bullshit this guy to looking into his bag by saying they saw Bitcoin in there. Do they, are, are they like Neo from the, can they see the code? Is that what's going on? Can't you say like it's a random check or something? Like if you, if you need an excuse, you think something's suspicious. I know. You don't have to, like you don't have to say something that doesn't exist is in there. Like your, your airport security, wouldn't that be the point? Yeah. I mean, if someone's suspicious to check. <laughs> I know it'd be it's one of those things that you just you sit there and go you have all of this power and yet you go to stupidity that's your first you're not instilling me with a lot of confidence these are people who get to touch your groin now you know I don't know some people ascribe things say don't ascribe to malice what could be ascribed to stupidity what if it's stupid and malicious at the same time? Then what the fuck do you do? Well, obviously, they just look like idiots now, so... <laughs> when... Okay, honestly, when haven't the TSA looked like idiots? Has there ever been... But, like, I mean, you can say any dumb thing that they've done, you know, it's like, people are pissed about it, but then it's like, oh, it's security, whatever. And then like, but then like with the Bitcoin thing, there's no real excuse you can come up with that, that they come out looking good. <laughs> this is over, I think there's over a decade of this and not once has, has anyone ever said, hooray, it's the TSA. No, I'm not saying people like it, but you really can't come up with any excuses for the Bitcoin thing. It's no. just moronic. No. <laughs> Okay, there are times on my show I look at a story and I have to go, well, I've got only a certain amount of time, so I kind of put some weird ones aside. And there was this weird story that came to me from, uh, I believe it was, was this, uh, um, was this located, I think this was, uh, uh, yeah, this was, was this Canada? Yeah, well, it was about, they had this, uh, giant, I think, no, it's Australia, okay, big difference, sorry. They have this giant three-story mango <laughs> that got, that disappeared. And I read that story and I'm like, oh, it's steal a mango. And I'm like, okay, well, I got some other stuff this week. That one's going to go by the wayside. But it seems that wasn't quite good enough. This story kind of came back and went, oh, yeah? We'll get on the show. We'll get the fuck on this show. You watch. So they did indeed find the three-story stolen mango. An update on the story, okay, because I, I haven't heard this. They found it. With a brand new meth lab inside. <laughs> <laughs> Last week, Bowen's 10 meter high mango disappeared overnight. Security footage seen below showed a heavy crane backing up and removing the town's iconic fruit. 10-ton, three-story high mango was located yesterday morning in the bushes behind the Bowen Tourist Information Center, where it disappeared early yesterday morning. The disappearance was supposedly a prank by fast food chain Nando's, but things took a more sinister turn as a makeshift meth lab and $50,000 of precursor chemicals 
were found inside the mango's access has hatch at the base. According to Bowen's chief police, two men have allegedly been charged with manufacture of methamphetamine, promotion of methamphetamine manufacture, initiation of a process intended to result in manufacture of methamphetamines, reckless endangerment, blah, blah, blah. It appears these men have moved into the meth mango following its relocation and it provided insulation against the elements. The meth mango. The meth. <laughs> the, of all the places to go, we gotta make us some meth. Jesse, we gotta cook. In the mango. <laughs> they, Wait, what did this have to do with Nando's? It was it was yeah. next to a Nando's? Well, or? apparently the Nando's fast food chain, which are, you know, they're all about the kind of mango and spice and stuff. They apparently stole the mango. But after they did, the meth guys went, hey, serendipity. <laughs> And decided to hop inside and <laughs> you know when choosing a place to do your illegal activities <laughs> it's important not to draw attention to yourself <laughs> you know find a nice quiet corner somewhere where you know like in a in a home or even a even an RV somewhere, but when I think of stealth, the first thing that comes to my mind is not <laughs> a giant fucking mango landmark which was just stolen. Not even just giant fucking mango, a giant fucking mango everyone is looking for anyway. How do you fucking miss a giant fucking mango? <laughs> Magmaster in the chat goes, "Roll dolls, abandoned book." James mango. James and the Giant Meth Mango. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it, it, this is... They'll never look for us in here. <laughs> it's protected from the elements. I can see no downsides to this. No downsides to the Giant Mango Meth Lab. <sighs> we have overtaken the Meth Mango. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it, it sounds like some kind of like night spot or something you know the meth mango <laughs> downtown australia's most exclusive club the meth mango speaking well, well, i'm sorry but what about nando stealing it though like a restaurant chain stole it like as a publicity stunt or yeah they just stole i think it so thought... oh, okay i see i i didn't understand that part <laughs> So, so speaking of, um, seem like, you know, should have thought the end result through, um, there are a lot of things I associate with church. Hymnals, communion wine, um, you know, the, 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 the choir, the, you know, the, the nice stained glass windows. I, I, there are a lot of things you go to church for, but I never thought that, um, this, this would be quite one of them. Kentucky Baptists lure new worshipers with gun giveaway. <laughs> Events use of weapons to try to save souls divides religious leaders. Louisville, Kentucky, in an effort to its spokesman has described as, quote, outreach to rednecks. The Kentucky Baptist Convention is leading the Second Amendment celebrations where churches around the state give guns away as door prizes to lure the unchurched in in hopes of converting them to Christ. More than 500 people showed up. <laughs> well, and 61 made decisions to seek salvation. This worked with 61 people. Out of 500. The other 440, uh, 439 were there for the gun raffle. <laughs> as many as 1,000 people are expected the next one, uh, where they will be given free steak dinner and a chance to win one of 25 handguns, long guns, and shotguns. What could possibly go wrong?
You know, I do remember that that classic story about Jesus and the money changers, but I don't quite remember Jesus having an AK. I don't I don't think that was in that was in the the You know, whatever feelings you may have on guns, like them or don't, you know, believe it. There's a time and a place. And that time and the place is not in the middle of a rendition of when the saints go marching in. <laughs> what about a mess mango giveaway? That would have been better. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's not, oh, what a friend we have in Smith & Wesson. It's, it's just... It. McAllister's boss, Paul Chitwood, the Pe Kentucky Baptist Convention's executive director, said such results speak for themselves. It's been very effective. They give away 25 guns to get 61 people. That doesn't seem very cost effective to me. It's... Well, like, what? And, like, what if someone, like, uses that gun to go shoot people? And then it's like, does that cancel exactly. out? Exactly! <laughs> yeah, a guy goes, he gets a gun, then later he sticks up a fucking 7 Eleven with it. What's it? Does the, is the church now guilty of aiding and abetting? Because, cause like, granted, most of them probably want it for defense or hunting. But. The, it, just giving them out to anyone there's potential there for someone unstable perhaps to take advantage of that situation i will i will let you go with jesus is my co-pilot not jesus is my accomplice <laughs> that's not that that's not gonna quite fly as much who gave you this gun the preacher no really who gave you this gun no, the church gave me the gun. I'm born again. Yay. I'm going to heaven. You just shot up a convenience store. And I'm going to heaven, so win-win. <laughs> uh. So, lastly tonight, this is the one that... Um, I guess you could say took the interwebs by storm. And um, I wish Tara was here because I honestly can say without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, for once, I know whose fault this next story is. This is all Doug's fault. <laughs> because go on a while ago. We were we we were doing Doug was on uh, the show with me and Tara and um, he he made a joke about hot pockets and and regarding a sexual of, of an of hot pockets and a sexual nature and and it became a bit of a thing and um, we kind of forgot about it and it went by the wayside and then then this happened and I I weep for us all and this is. Remember, everyone, this is all Doug's fault. A dude who had sex with a Hot Pocket is now a Twitter folk hero. <laughs> a team known as Thought Pocket is, <laughs> is fighting back after his Vine account was suspended. The offense... He filmed himself having sex with a hot pocket. And a Pop Tarts box. I and I've got let's let's have a look. He has a selfie here. How old is he? 12? He looks like it, doesn't it? it selfie with yeah, there he he um he told his followers he'd have sex with a Hot Pocket if he received a minimum number of retweets. Wee uh, wee Post a video on Vine eight hours later with the hashtag, quote, with the hashtag number side food porn. 
Though the clip was deleted shortly afterward, he continued gloating about his achievement on Twitter, telling his followers he followed up the Hot Pocket stunt by doing the same with a donut, then a bowl of Jello. He was also very proud of the fact that Hot Pockets blocked him on Twitter. <laughs> Good publicity. And this was not a raw Hot Pocket. I'll point out. This was, in fact, a cooked Hot Pocket. And there's another article. He, 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 they actually interviewed him. He's getting interviews about this. Where he said, well, I tried it, but it was too hot. So I put it in the fridge for a little while, and then I used a condom. Always practice safe sex when fucking your food! He didn't eat it afterwards, did Oh, God, he? I hope not. Because <laughs> that's the thing, like, it's like, okay, you fuck the Hot Pocket. Weird. But then eating it afterwards, I'm not sure about that one. Like, <laughs> you know, the fact that he's a folk hero, you think they'll sing, like, folk songs about him? About the hot pocket fucker. <laughs> so, you know what? You say that. There's only are there probably already like ten of them on YouTube right now. That's the internet. We do stupid shit on the internet as a, for a living. I, I acknowledge this. We we do very. I look what I'm doing right now. I'm talking about a kid fucking a hot pocket. But I have never gone quite so far as this. I, it never even occurred to me in my mind, what can I do to get my view count up? I will stick my dick in a microwave, in a microwave pastry. Perfect. You, you know what? You don't have boobs, so you gotta do that. Mm, yeah. mm. Think about it. Mm. I, I have literally went to Home Depot, purchased wood and tools, went back to my home, built a wall. And fi I film myself building a wall and then bashing my head into it. Looks like you're putting too much work in there when you could just have sex with Hot Pocket. I know! I mean, Jesus Christ! What did you do wrong with your life? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I get a DSLR camera. I, I got the green screen set up here. I got sets built, all this shit. And all I had to do, all it took was just sticking my dick in a hot pocket. You ever feel like you're in the movie Idiocracy sometimes? Sometimes. <laughs> it's like, oh, I did all this work, put all these sets in. Have sex with a hot pocket. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> like. Can't like a vine. Shit. Now, eventually what's going to happen is you're going to get an Oscar for having sex with a Hot Pocket. That's that's what's coming. Hey, Transformers got nominated for a fucking Oscar, okay? If Where that... was Transformers in there? Not this year, last year. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, last year, the year before, Transformers 3 got, got nominated for uh, Best Sound Design. Oh. Well, Lone Ranger got nominated this year, so... Twice... I think I'd rather watch the kid fuck the Hot Pocket. <laughs> Honestly, if, if, if I had the choice, you know, you can watch the Lone Ranger or a kid fuck a Hot Pocket, I'd be like, yeah, so what kind of Hot Pocket? Is it ham and cheese? Is it? Is what it if pizza? in the Lone Ranger they fuck the Hot Pocket? Probably would have made the movie better. <laughs> if they had cut out the the old man segment uh, framing it and then just had sex in the hot pocket, instantly a million times better. Hey, you know this kid does this now, but this is one of the and we, we've said this before. The internet is forever. His name is now on the internet. His image and name are now connected to this. In 10 years, someone's going to Google his ass when he's trying to get a fucking job or something. And he's going to be the kid that fucked the Hot Pocket for eternity. Because this is... This never goes away. 
Well, I guess I guess that means that Hot Pockets will not be hiring him no. for their facilities. No. It would be highly irresponsible of them to do that. Kind of like the fox in the hen house, wouldn't it? <laughs> Hello, ladies! <laughs> hey, maybe the TSA will recognize him, and then they're going to stop him and say they saw a Bitcoin in his Hot Pocket. Uh, That's how they search him. Uh. So yeah, I think I think the first thing we learned this week is it's all Doug's fault. Doug said it, and and it, it's all your fault, Doug. I'm sorry, man. It's all Doug's fault. That's the title this week. It's all Doug's fault. That's that's what it. Um, we learned that uh, y you know, just because you have a little free time on your hands doesn't mean that all things are appropriate activities in public. Read a book, maybe listen to some music. Not porn. That's that's not that's not a share with the class activity. Quite clearly, quite literally, not a share with the class activity. They don't like it when you do that. Especially amputee porn is is you gotta wonder, are there, like, stars of amputee porn? Is there, like, like an adult video awards category for best amputee porn? You know, if you got into it, you wouldn't have to try for jobs. Like, you would never have to audition, ever. Like, you're qualified, you know? Yeah. Like, you'd be set. Like, that's why straight guys do gay porn, because it pays better. Yeah. You know? Like, you're like, less people want to do it, I'll do it. We learned that, um... <laughs> checking for a pulse, maybe you should get a second opinion sometimes. Just, just cover your ass, get the second opinion. Otherwise, you end up with, you know, you've got a bloody body bag, an old guy with a shotgun blast in his head, and your assistant is screaming about zombies. If you don't want that to happen, just check. Just give it a double check. That's what we have those EKG machines for. That's what they're there to do. Um, We've learned the TSA in over the 10 years of its existence. They haven't changed. They are still the same old TSA. Good old, reliable, useless fucking TSA. For all time. Always. I'm gonna have to deal with them tomorrow. We learned that if you are going to attempt some sort of illegal clandestine activity, your best option is not the giant fucking mango! Of all fucking places, you would have had a better chance of just hiding in the woods and getting the fuck <laughs> away with it than inside the giant fucking mango. It's, it's, and lastly, we learned that I guess there are going to be a rash of crimes in which God is going to be indicted as a co-conspirator. I can't wait for those cases to come to court because the, that's going to be entertainment. Uh, praise the Lord and pass the ammunition. That's taken on a whole new meaning. Kind of, I'm, kind of, I'm kind of glad I don't, I don't go to church anymore. Couldn't afford a bulletproof vest. <laughs> <laughs> 